Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again, and welcome back to my channel. So, first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe to the channel by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because that's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today, I'm going to continue the augmented reality videos. We're going to be creating a measuring implementation. The reason why I want to do this is because I'm actually remodeling my basement, and in the remodeling, I need to do a lot of measurements. So. We're going to be doing what I call a measuring tape in augmented reality, placing one point in one area, another point in another area, and then calculating the distance. We're also going to be using the line render to create the illusion of a measuring tape. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so this is the other video that I wanted to show you how this is running on my device. So I'm basically doing plane detection right now. and determining what the distance is. So at this point, I already touched the screen. I also touched the ending part of the screen, and you can see how the text mesh is basically changing its position and also changing the value that I calculated based on the distance of the first point to the distance of the ending point. So that's basically what I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, so let me show you the scene that I created for the augmented reality measurement tape. So the way that it works is I have two different points that I create when the user basically selects a plane that is detected. So if I show you how it works, I can show you by just running the game. And not everything is going to work, but it's gonna, I'm going to show you what I create by default. So you can see that these two measure, measure points that are created by default. The reason why they're not enabled is because I wait for the user to select an area on the plane before I enable them. But for debugging purposes, I can show you how it works. So if I enable those two and I go into them, you can see that I basically have a label above it and I also have, I have two of them. So if I move this to the right, you can see that I'm drawing a line render from the position, the start point position, which I call this one, to the end point. So, and the other thing is as I'm moving around, this is also the distance is also following the position of the last point. So if I move around, this is all basically, you know, it's getting a snap to the end point and it's basically mimicking a measuring tape. And this can be completely configurable. If you want it to look better, you can do it. If you want to change how the label looks like, you're more than, you know, you're more than welcome to do it because I'm going to be putting this in GitHub and you can download it anytime you want and make customizations if you like to as this is open source so if i move this around or if i move this other one around let me grab the first one you can see that everything you know we're calculating the everything in unity is in meters so i'm calculating converting this to inches and that's what you're seeing that that in inches and i can go really close or if i get really close everything updates so that's pretty much how it works but i want to show you the setup in in the code so that you know what you need to change if you want to use this implementation so there's a couple of things that i have in the hierarchy like i was showing you this is the distance i'm using test text mesh pro to create a 3d component which is a text box that gets updated during the movement of the points so you can see that this is basically a distance text and it has a text mesh pro component associated with it and I have Y and I also have the font size to be very low because we're working with augmented reality. So that's basically that piece. The other pieces, if you follow the previous tutorials on Unity AR Foundation Essentials, you probably went through the plane detection. And if you haven't done so, please go through that before you keep watching this video because I walk you through how to detect the vertical plane, how to detect the horizontal plane. So if you know and you have that foundation, it's going to be a lot easier to understand how this works. So this has the same setup. I have a directional light. I have an AR session and I also have an AR session origin, which uh, which has an AR camera inside. So the other pieces that are customized for this scene, which is the measurement scene in Unity, is the measurement controller. So this is the controller that pretty much handles everything in the scene which is going to include plane detection and it also handles the input from the user so it knows if the user touches the screen where it's touching if it's touching the plane 
So it handles all of that information. And it also has a line render associated with it. And that's basically that line render that you see, which I use to simulate kind of a tape in augmented reality. So the other pieces that this measurement controller takes is a measurement point in what I call a measurement point prefab. So if I go into that, it's basically just a, an sphere with a black color. And if you want to replace this with something else and something more creative, you're like I said, you're, you can easily replace it by just modifying this prefab or creating your own prefab and associating that with this property. The, the other thing that I have is a measurement factor. So I wanted to go from meters to inches. So this allows you to basically have a factor that calculates whatever measurement you want to use. So I'm using I'm using 39.37, which is what's going to take us two inches from meters. The other thing that I have is an offset measurement. So this is so that I can offset the 3D text that you see right here. And if you want to offset it on X or Y or Z, you're more than welcome to change that. The other thing that I have is basically UI components. And then the last piece is the AR camera manager. So for the UI components, if I go to the game view and I play the game, you can see that I have a basically a tutorial for the player. And this is very basic. I just telling the player the or the person who is going to try the experience. I keep on making games. So I'm thinking that this is a player. This is not a player. This is somebody that is going to use the basically this implementation. But the user is going to read this and is going to know basically what steps to follow. And that it's all contained in the canvas. So if I go to the canvas, I have a panel and I also have a button to this MISA. And then the title is going to be this section right here. And the instructions is going to be the second section. So you can see that you can change that if you like as well. So if we go back to the air session origin, so those are those three components, the welcome panel, it's going to be that that component that this miss button is going to be that component and then the distance text it's going to be the test mesh pro component that i showed you before so now let me show you how the code works so i'm just going to go into assets open c sharp project and i'm going to walk you through the implementation so just like i showed you in previous videos you want to if you're going to do plane detection meaning that we want to detect the floor or we want to detect the walls you want to make sure that we're including the AR Raycast Manager, especially where we're placing objects on it, because we need to detect, OK, are we, are, do we have a floor that we can place objects on? Do we have a wall that we can place objects on? So that's what the Raycast Manager is going to be for. So this is the measurement controller script, just so that you know which one we're looking at. I have many of them already, so this is going to be one of the examples. And then the other component that I'm requiring in here is a game object for the measurement point prefab. This is going to be the, the point that I show you that was a black sphere that the user can select as a starting point and then the user can select as an ending point. The measurement factor, I show you what that was. I also show you the offset, which is a vector three. Also the welcome panel, the dismiss button, the test mesh pro, distant text is also exposing here. I also have the AR camera manager, a line render to basically draw a line between the starting point and the ending point. I also have an AR Raycast manager, which is basically the required component that we have as an attribute on the class. I also have the starting point and the ending point. So this one right here is basically the free the prefab that we're going to use to create two in different instances because I want to allow the user to basically point where they want to start measuring. That's what I'm creating a, a game object for the starting point and also one for the ending point. Then I also want to detect the touch position. So I want to know where the user wants to place the measurement tape. And that's what I'm storing in, in this location. And then I'm also storing a list of all the hits that the user has against the planes. So on the awake method is very straightforward. We get basically the component, the AR Raycast manager. We also create an instance of the of, of the start point and also of the end point. And you can see that we're using the measurement point prefab. And we're starting at zero and also the rotation is basically at zero. Then I get a component which is the measure line and that is of type line render. 
then I set the start point and the end point to false because I don't want to show that until the user actually selects where they want to start from. And then I basically bound and add a method to this dismiss button. So when somebody clicks on the dismiss button, we don't show the panel. So you can see the welcome panel is dismissed as soon as somebody presses that button. The other thing that I do in here is when this component is enabled, I'm basically checking to make sure that the measurement point prefab has been set. That is a very critical, a critical component. Like if I want the user to the or the designer of this application to set that. If they don't set it, I'm gonna basically throw an error and disable this component. So most of the work is in the update method. So I'm using the input the touch count to detect if the user is touching the screen. If I receive one touch, I get the touch, basically the touch class. So if you do input that get touch as zero, it's gonna give you the touch. Then I have two different checks that I do. So if the user starts touching the screen, this is when this is gonna get executed. I get the touch position. And then what I do is I use the ray cast to determine if there is a collision on the plane at that touch position. So if there's a collision at that point, meaning that the user is basically measuring the floor or the wall where we have a plane already detected. So what I do, I, I set the start point to true. So I start displaying the starting point. I get the hit pose, which is gonna be the position at the plane location. And then what I do, I set the start point transfer position and rotation at that point. So this is what's basically gonna set that sphere that I show you at a specific position where the user want to start measuring. Then when the user starts moving the touch, when they start moving their finger across the screen to determine what's gonna be the end position, then I do a check on the touch face and I determine if they're moving, if they're mo moving their finger. If they are, I get the touch position at that location. I also do another ray cast to determine if we're, st if we're still hitting the plane. If we are, I then start displaying the measure line and I show you that measure line is, was a line render. So this is where I start showing that. And I also start showing the end point. So at this point, you're gonna see the starting point and also the ending point getting rendered. Then I get the location of this and then I set the end point to be that location. Then the other point that is really, really important is I, at what point do we show the distance text? And that is basically this text right here that I showed you before which is gonna show us our distance in inches. So if the starting point and the ending point are active, meaning that the user already selected a starting point and an ending point, at that point, I, I basically set the location of the distance text, which is gonna be the end point plus the offset that I'm setting. And then I also set the rotation to be at the end point location, rotation. So the other thing that I do is I also I also change the, the measure line positions because I need to determine at what point the line is gonna render. So I grab the location of the starting point and also the location of the ending point. And I basically draw the line from the starting point to the ending point. And then what I do is I do a little bit of math to calculate the distance. I use vector three distance. I pass in the starting position and the ending position, which basically gives me a float and then that float, which is gonna be a distance between the starting and the ending point, I multiply it by the factor, and then I use a string formatter to only go two decimal places, and then I show that it's gonna be in inches. So I know that there was a lot of guys, and if you guys have any questions, let me know. But for the most part, you, you're gonna be looking at this code and then cloning this code from GitHub. Go through the code, put breakpoints, run it on your device and then you know get familiar with it it's really not complicated it's just you know a matter of trying it out and then seeing how it works if you guys have any questions about what i just showed you please let me know thank you guys all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what i just showed you please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm basically posting information about what i'm doing behind the scenes and I'm also posting early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.